Hi guys, this is pre-algebra lesson 6-2. Solve two step equations. In this lesson, you'll be able to solve a problem with a two step equation. Let's get started with solve and discuss it. Elizabeth wrote the following rules. What is the relationship between the shapes? Ooh, we got circles, triangles, and squares. Can you figure out what their relationships are? By looking at the equations, how many circles are triangles? How many circles are rectangles? The squares? How many squares are the triangles? Can you figure them out? So there's a hint. How can you use properties of equality to reason about these equations? Okay. So first, look at the first equation. We got four circles plus triangle is equal to two squares and a triangle. Do you see anything common? They both, the both sides have a triangle. So you can get rid of them because if you subtract the triangle on both sides by subtraction property of equality, your equation stays the same. So that means four circles, equal to two squares. So what does that mean? That means one square is equal to two circles, okay? So two circles is equal to one square. What about the second equation? We got three triangles plus three, no, two circles is equal to one, two circles plus a square. So you can subtract one circle, two circles. And that means you have three triangles that are equal to a square. So three triangles is equal to a square. Okay. So does the last equation make sense? One square is three triangles. And one square, wait, two square is one. Two circles is one square. And one square is three triangles. So three plus three triangles is six triangles, right? Three triangle is a square. That is also a square. One square means two circles. So a square plus two circles will equal to six triangles. And that makes sense. Let's write them down. We got some great discoveries. So if we subtract a triangle from each side of the first equation, two circles equals two one squared. We subtract two circles from each side on the second equation. Three triangles equal to one square. So that means one square is equal to two circles, and that's equal to three triangles. that's the relationship between the shapes and that's what we wanted to figure out okay relationship between the shapes what are they worth what are they equal to in terms of another okay focus on math practices complete the equation with only triangles using the relationships from the clues shown above can you complete this equation with only triangles Okay, so what do we know about circles? What are the clues that we have? We know that two circles is equal to a square. And we know three, three triangles is equal to a square. So two, two 
um, circles would be a square. And that means that's equal to three squares added together. And we want to write this in terms of triangles. So every square is worth three triangles. So you add, have three and then three and then three triangles. So total you have nine triangles total. Okay, that wasn't too hard, right? Let's look at the next page. So in this lesson, our essential question is how is solving a two-step equation similar to solving a one-step equation? You already know how to solve one-step equations. You just need to add or subtract or multiply or divide both sides to get a variable, but we might have to do more than just one step. You might have to add and subtract. You might have to divide and multiply, okay? Uh, we're gonna look at two-step equations. Let's look at example one. Nala and two friends spend $21 on movie tickets and a box of popcorn. How could they figure out how much each movie tickets cost? So you're gonna write two-step equations by setting up equation using the skills that we learned in last lesson, okay? They spend $21 total and so that's the total spent and the tickets for the movie would be the same for both for for all of them so m plus m plus m 3m would be the total movie tickets where m represents one movie ticket costs and then they spent six dollars for popcorn it's in the picture okay so that means you can write an equation 21 is equal to 3m plus 6. So one step, your first step is subtracting 6 on both sides. And that still doesn't solve your problem. It's 15 equals 3m. In order to figure out m, you, you need to do one more step, dividing the coefficient of m. So divide 3 on both sides and you get m is equal to 5. So each movie ticket costs $5, okay? It might be easier to just guess and check at this point, but when the number gets bigger and more complicated, you will need to write the equation down and solve for the variable like this, okay? So please practice with the easy numbers. Let's look at try it. See if you can write the equation by yourself and solve for um, the variable. Andrew rents bowling shoes for $4. He bowls two games. Andrew spent a total of $22. How much was the cost of each game B? Complete the bar diagrams and then solve the problem. So total of $22 were spent, okay? And the shoe rental is $4. Cost she he he um he played two games right he bowls two games so b plus b so where b is equal to cost per game okay that's our first diagram and then that means you can subtract four from the total and total would add up to twenty two so if you subtract four what do you get 18. And then you have, you divide 18 by 2 to get what each B costs. 18 divided by 2 is 9. Okay, this is 18 and together it's 22 total. Okay, so B is equal to 9. 9 dollars. Don't forget the dollar sign. All right. So convince me, what were the two steps you needed to solve this equation? What did you do? First, subtract $4 from the total cost of 22 to get 18. Second, divide the $18 
by two to find the cost of each game. Dollars. Okay, so you need to be able to summarize what you did. Okay, let's look at example two. Solve two sub-equations algebraically. John has a $21.61 balance on a gift card that can be used to purchase online music. He bought some songs that each cost $1.29. Now he has $10 left. How many songs did John purchase? So let's follow his spending. Okay, balance of gift card is given. Cost of one song is 1.29, and we don't know how many numbers of songs he spent, um, he bought. But after he spent the money, he has $10 left in his balance. So write the equation, 21.61 minus 1.29 times the number of songs, D is equal to 10. And then you're gonna solve for D. Okay, if you, write, if you wrote the equation down properly, you should be able to get the correct answer. Double check if your equation is right and check your answer. D is nine. You subtract on both sides and divide both sides and you get nine. If you forgot to uh, divide it by negative, you might get a negative answer, but you, you cannot have a negative cost. So then you would need to check your answers, your, your steps again. John purchased nine songs. Example three, compare algebraic and arithmetic solutions. The number of trumpet players is two more than one fourth of the entire band. How many students are in the band? So algebraically, how can you write the equation? Number of trumpet players, which you can say, uh, B, wait, no, uh, which you can say T is two more than one fourth of the entire band. So quite literally, you can rewrite the first sentence into an algebraic phrase. Um, how many students are in the band? If you know 18 students play the trumpet in the band, that means trumpet players, the number of trumpet players, T is 18. So you can rewrite the equation. 18 is equal to two plus one fourth B and solve for B. Subtract two on both sides. So when you're solving for the variable, you wanna get rid of the numbers that's on the same side with your variable because you want the variable to be by itself. Okay, so that you know what variable, what the variable is equal to. So ultimately your goal is to get one B is equal to what number, okay? So you want to subtract two first because if you multiply four, then it's more complicated. You need to use distributed property and so on. You need to multiply four on all the terms. And a lot of times there's where the mistake happens. So if you have addition or subtraction, do that first, okay? So subtract two on both sides and then multiply four on both sides to get B is equal to 64. All right, see if you can do the try by yourself. Christy ran 24 laps in a charity run and then walked 0.2 kilometer to a presentation table. The total distance Christy traveled was 29.6 kilometers. What was the distance of each lap? Explain how you would solve the problem. So first you need to write the equation, Solve for the variable, write the answer, and explain how you solved it, okay? So X, whatever you don't know is your variable. What was the distance of each lap is the question. So obviously your X is gonna be the distance of each lap, okay? And how do you write the equation? She ran 24 laps and then um, walked 0.2 kilometer, Wait, 24 laps. Laps and kilometers are different. So the distance of each 
lap is x. So um, you don't know how, how many distance. So 24 times x would be the total distance of how much Kristen ran, right? Uh, the distance, x is distance of each lap. Okay, and plus 0 0.2 kilometer, that's already a distance. And the total distance is 29.6 kilometers, okay? And then you solve for the variable, you subtract 0 0.2 on both sides, divide by 24 on both sides. And what is, what, what is your x? So let's do it step by step. Subtract 0 0.2 on both sides, you get 24x is equal to 29.4 and then x is equal to 29.4 divided by 24 which is 1.225 so your answer is 1.225 kilometers and now can you explain so the answer is 1.225 kilometers and what did you do first subtract wait um, first write the equation um, 24x plus 0.2 is equal to 29.6, where x represents the distance of each lap. Then subtract 0.2 from both sides get 24x is equal to 29.4. Then divide 29.4 by 24 elapsed to uh, 24 to get 1.225. Okay, let's add the dimensions. 29.4 kilometers by 24 laps to get 1.225 kilometers. Okay. All right. So let's summarize our, our lesson. The properties of e equality can be applied to the same way when solving two step equations. As long as you're using the properties of equality, right, then you should be able to get a correct answer. And notice that you're undoing subtraction by addition and addition by subtraction, multiplication undoes division, division undoes multiplication. Keep that in mind, solve one step by one step. All right, that was our lesson two, solving two step equations. In our next lesson, success three, we'll solve equations using the distributed property. So it's gonna be a little bit more complicated than the, uh, the ones we saw today, but we can do it. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.